place, but he just keeps coming and filling it up. See, that's me. I'm the pitcher. I'm the earthen vessel that's all busted up and cracked. There's plenty of Holy Spirit to fill us all. You don't have to worry about that. The gifts aren't given to you for uh, games. The, the gifts are given to you to change your life. Don't be worried about changing somebody else's life. Get yours changed. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. You know, and, and, and we'll get more into that as we show you going through Acts here. Some of the things we get into. Let's get into the scripture here. 39 it says, For the promise is, is, is to you and to your children, to all who are far off. That's me, far off. As many as the Lord of God will call. He says, and with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved, he says, from this perverse generation. You know, and, and be saved. Everyone needs to be saved. He says, and, and 41, he says, and then those who gladly received the word were baptized that day. About 3,000 souls were added. Can we just check this out? Is Pete changed? You see a different Peter here than you've seen in the Gospels? Why, in the Gospels, those guys would have came, he'd have whipped out his sword, I'll stand them off. You guys make it out the back door, I'll take an ear or two. You know? That would have been Pete in the Gospels when he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, God doesn't need us to fulfill his plan. What, what this earth needs is not me, not more me's. They need the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth. Well, he's chosen through the foolishness of preaching and the infilling of the Holy Spirit to live in a body here on this earth through people like you and me. We're to, we're to the ambassadors. We're bringing Jesus, the body of Jesus, the body of Jesus is still on this earth. You know, that's a pretty important job. And what you'll find out is it's 724. You won't have time for you to live and do. In Deuteronomy, God says this to the Jewish people. Put aside your ambitions. Turn your stiff neck and circumcise your heart. He says that to them in, in Deuteronomy. Now, we always like the stiff neck part. Oh, yeah, they're stiff neck. What does that mean? Well, they can't look up. They're always looking out for what they can see and do. And... When God says, circumcise your heart. Well, that's... I'm, I'm just right now putting together a whole hour topic on circumcision because it's so important to the body of Christ today. Not the literal for the Jews, but the spiritual for the body of Christ. Very, very important. But he says, so the, the part in there I want people to see another thing. He says, put aside your ambitions. You see, I want to do this. For God. God says, you'll just mess it up. You know, Abram says, I want to have a child for God. Sarah goes, well, I can't, so take Hagar. <laughs> That's the Ishmael. They're still fighting that war today, by the way. <laughs> See, the problem is when we jump in and try and help God out and do things without a bar, we, we, we don't realize how far down the road these waves are going to go. And how many problems it's going to cause. We have no idea. That's why we need to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit alter John's coming. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Walk in the light. Walk in the light, children. Walk in the light. Why? Because you get out of the light, you're going to do something stupid. And it's going to have ramifications that you aren't going to believe. You know, have, have you ever done that as a Christian? No, I have. 42. He says, they continued steadfastly, he says, in the apostles' doctrines. Mark that in your neighbor's Bible. You know, just <laughs> the apostles' doctrines. Not the church doctrines, not the age of doctrines, not the new age doctrines, not the, the apostles' doctrines. Where did they get it? They walked with Jesus and got it from him. The apostles' doctrines. Those are the ones. Look. Live your life by that. Because there's going to be a lot of people coming around with all these new doctrines. Doctrines. Dogmas. Things to do. Things you have to be. Believe me, I came up through a church that had a lot of dogmas. <laughs> he says, the apostles' doctrines and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. You know, two things here. Breaking of bread and prayers 
That's where you fellowship around that. Why is that? Well, if there's anything, the two things about us that would would typify human beings is what? Eating and talking. Talk to God. Remember I said we need to know His will? See, that's one of the reasons I study the Bible and I want everybody to get into the Word of God and study it. You'll find out it's a living book. Living Word. God tells us that. Every time I teach this book, see why I have this colored pencil? Every time I go through this book, I see something I never saw before. And I'll, I'll do this, and then I'll go back and look at it. I have, and I teach this thing twice a year, you know, at the school, Genesis to Revelation. I go out and teach all these Bible studies, and I still, every time I go through it, find something new. It's alive. This is Logos. This is Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit. See, knowing here, that's how you find out the will of God. This is how you know what he has for your life. You see, it tells us in Acts in the 17th chapter, he says, you were appointed, you were born in one blood within this time and within this bounds, that you might grope and find God. God said, of all the time in creation that would be best for you to get saved and be able to walk for me and make sure I can get you into heaven, the best chance you've got is this day and age right now. That's why you're here. And he says that right now everything lines up with your personality and you in particular. And, and, and so this is the best chance. He says, I love the words in the old King James. It says, grope and find God. Because we're like blind men. Looking at God, I go through the word of God People say, boy, you're really skillful in handling the Word of God. Are you kidding me? You have no idea. When I came to the Lord, I went to a Bible study because they offered a potluck at food. That's the only reason I went. My wife tricked me. And then I got there and this woman was teaching. And you know what she was teaching? The book of Esther. <laughs> I never heard anybody teach like that. And after it was over, I went to her. And my wife thought I'd be furious. She knew divorce was on the horizon. And I, I walked into this woman. I said, "If a person wanted to read the Bible, where would you start?" She said, "In the Book of John." We went home. My wife had been given this Bible as some gift or something. She, we took the cellophane off of it out of the closet, unwrapped it. You know how stupid it is. You know there's four Johns in there? Which John? I mean, that's how dumb we were. And I said, and then everybody told me, you, nobody can understand the Bible. I said, then, what's it there for? Now you have to also understand this. When I graduated from high school, I couldn't hardly read or write. Because I didn't graduate from high school. <laughs> Lord taught me, and I read now out of His Word. Change, 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 change from what you were into what God wants you to be. And you say, "Well, I'm not. I can't do this. I'm, I'm down here in this little town or this or." Do you know God may have a plan for you to live the next Billy Graham to the Lord? And then you get credit for everything He did. You don't even have to go out and do those hard things. <laughs> See, we don't know, but God will empower you. And it comes from this, what we're reading right here in Acts. The Holy Spirit was given so that your life might change, my life might change, that God can live as he wants to here on this earth. And what is the purpose for it? To call all men, all women to himself, that he might call out a people holy as he is holy to live with him for eternity. That's it. It's not to build fancy houses and buildings and churches and whatever. It's to call out people. But we find him here. So let's finish this up real quick. He says in 43, it says, And then fear came upon every soul. Yeah, because it's so much truth, the Holy Spirit's there. He says, Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. See, wonders and signs are wonderful. Do you know that they won't keep you? They won't save you? I've had... I've had, I've been, you know, I've been walking this walk for a long time and I've seen miracles that I could just stand up here and just blow your, you wouldn't believe the things I have seen. They didn't keep me, they won't keep you. They, they come and they go,